Lori Anderson, an American musician, composer, performance artist, and inventor, was born in Illinois in 1947. She earned a degree in art history from Barnard College. Anderson initially worked as an illustrator. She then studied sculpture at Columbia University, earning a Master's of Fine Arts in 1972. But she also played the violin, and had already started working in experimental performance art by 1969. One of her early performance art pieces is 1974's Duets on Ice. She wore ice skates frozen into blocks of ice and played a violin along with a recording. A performance of the piece ended once the ice blocks had melted away. Musicologist Susan McClary discusses Laurie Anderson in her book Feminine Endings. For example, McClary discusses the concept of performance art. Quote, the genre known as performance art arose in the 1960s and was in part a reaction against the erasure of people from art. One of the principal features of performance art is the insistence on the artist as a performing body. Gone is the division of labor in which a composer constructs an object and passes it on to a performer who executes faithfully the demands of the master. In performance art, artist and performer are usually one and the piece is that which is inscribed on and through the body. The radical separation of mind and body that underwrites most so-called serious music and music theory is here thrown into confusion." End quote. Anderson's Duets on Ice is an excellent example of what McClary is talking about. But as we will see, the whole idea of the mind-body split is something that Anderson mainly pursued through electronics. Her earliest composition that's widely available is her 1977 New York Social Life. The piece features an underlying single-string instrumental part, and Anderson uses electronics to enact both voices of a telephone conversation. Here's an excerpt. Well, I was lying in bed one morning, trying to think of a really good reason to get up, and the phone rang, and it was Jerry, and she said, Hey, hi, how are you? What's going on? How's your work? Oh, fine, you know, just waking up. Anderson was musically influenced by the minimalist music of the 1960s and 70s, such as the repeating patterns and overlapping phrases and rhythms of music by Philip Glass. Her single, Oh Superman, was released in 1981. The eight-and-a-half-minute song became a surprise number two hit in Great Britain, and it led to Anderson's even more surprising seven-album deal with Warner Brothers Records. Anderson dedicates O oh Superman to the late 19th and early 20th century French composer Massenet. Specifically, O oh Superman references his opera Le Jongleur de Notre Dame from 1902. The opera contains a piece that begins O oh Souverain, O oh Juge, O oh Père, and Anderson transforms that in the opening line of O oh Superman to O oh Superman, O oh Judge, O oh Mom and Dad. The climax of Massenet's opera has the main character pursued by an angry mob and backing up against a painting of the Virgin Mary and saved by her when her arms draw him into the picture. Anderson transforms this idea in O Superman to being held by mom in her long arms, her military arms, her petrochemical arms, thus making a complex, ironic statement about the West, technology, and so on. Perhaps naturally, Anderson uses technology extensively in O oh Superman. The piece is based around a pedal point on the pitch, middle C, on her own voice, on the syllable ha. She sings the syllable into a microphone, but then has it play back through an electronic loop. The ha sound continues for the entire duration of the piece. As McClary points out, the ha sound could be either a sardonic laugh or an anxious, childish whimper. Anderson's playing here with what it usually means in the West to build music above a pedal point, many different chords, counterpoint, and so on. Anderson, though, only has two chords surrounding that middle C, an A-flat major chord in first inversion with its middle pitch, C, at the bottom, and a C minor chord in reposition. In Western tonal music, a weak inverted major chord would almost certainly lose to some other chord or chords, but C minor doesn't really win out either, and the semitone from A flat to G is the only difference between those two chords. 
Anderson has thus reduced the idea of tonality to its bare essentials. Also, the notes she sings while those chords are happening appear partly in her recorded natural voice. However, the words she's singing also affect the sound of a synthesizer at the same time through a device called a vocoder, which makes it sound like the synthesizer is also singing. Towards the end of the song, repeating patterns appear, but still combined with the alternating chords. Also, the pedal point, middle C, ha, has been continuing through the entire song, and it's still there at the end, with its always there, but also final word about nothing having actually been concluded. Here are excerpts from the beginning of the work, around a third of the way in, the So Hold Me Mom section, and the very end of the work. Because of Anderson's unexpected commercial success, an album called Big Science was released shortly after the single, with the album named after one of her other songs, although it also includes Oh Superman. On the album, Anderson herself contributed vocals, vocoder use, keyboards, percussion elements, violin, and additional electronics. She also worked with several additional instrumentalists, especially wind instruments and percussion and drums. Some of the songs are fairly music-oriented, but others of them are based more on spoken voice. However, everything is quite influenced by musical minimalism. Anderson's next album was Mr. Heartbreak, from 1984. On it, Anderson pursued a more pop-rock sound than she had on Big Science. She even collaborated with British rock musician Peter Gabriel on the song Excellent Birds and on Gravity's Angel. However, she also included her earlier collaborator, the American postmodern author William S. Burroughs, in a drawling, bemused, spoken baritone on the album's final song, Sharky's Night. In the same year as Mr. Heartbreak, 1984, Anderson also released United States Live a 5-LP distillation of her 8-hour, two-evening show recorded in 1983 at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. It is mostly based on her more experimental performance artwork, but it also includes performances of everything heard on her first album, Big Science, plus early versions of two songs that would then appear on Mr. Heartbreak, including Long Demur, then called Hothead. Anderson sometimes explored gender issues using electronic pitch shift effects to lower or raise her voice register. She named this technique audio drag. Similarly, some of Anderson's work 
involves her own inventions. For example, the tape bow violin uses recorded magnetic tape on the bow and a magnetic tape head in the bridge of the violin. It allowed her to play strange, repeating, minimalist patterns. Later versions of the invention used MIDI and sampled sounds instead. Here are examples of audio drag and the tape bow violin. That relentless and impenetrable sound of difficult music. <laughs> I think I have to take a test in the Dairy Queen on another planet. Anderson's next release was the 1986 concert film, Home of the Brave. The film and related album include versions of her earlier song, Language is a Virus. It references her piece, Walking and Falling, and the ha at the beginning of the chorus arguably references O oh, Superman. Here's an excerpt. Well, I was talking to a friend and I was saying I wanted you and I was looking for you but I couldn't find you I couldn't find you and he said hey you talking to me or are you just practicing for one of those performances you know? huh? Anderson's next studio album was 1989's Strange Angels, and she actually took voice lessons before making it. Here's an example from Beautiful Red Dress. Well, they say women shouldn't be the president Cause they go crazy from time to time Well, push my button, baby, here I In 1994, Anderson released the pop album, Bright Red, produced by rock producer Brian Eno, and including the participation of her partner and future husband, rock singer-songwriter and guitarist Lou Reed. Then, only a few months later, in 1995, she released the album The Ugly One with the Jewels, which is based on her performance art piece, Stories from the Nerve Bible, although on the album version, the stories and monologues are accompanied by music. Anderson developed the six-foot-long MIDI controller, a baton-like talking stick, in the late 90s, with which various types of sounds can be played, such as from on stage. Anderson also created a stage show called Songs and Stories from Moby Dick, inspired by Herman Melville's 1851 novel. Her next studio album, Life on a String includes three songs based on that stage show. Another song, Slip Away, is about the death of Anderson's father. In 2003, Anderson became NASA's first artist-in-residence. She was also involved artistically in the Olympic Games in Athens in 2004 and the Winter Games in Vancouver in 2010. In 2004-5, Anderson also worked in France and Japan. Anderson's next studio album was 2010's Homeland. The album strikes a good balance between her artistic, philosophical side and her pop-rock side. It includes some quite active and percussive rock sounds, especially on the song Only an Expert, which even has elements from electronic dance music. The album, however, also has many songs with relatively mellow, reflective textures, sometimes synthesizer, sampler, or vocoder-based and actually quite a lot of singing, and sometimes violin. She also includes vocal and instrumental elements from various types of world music. For the spoken voice-based piece, Another Day in America, she uses audio drag to lower her voice. Parts of the album are quite charged politically about various types of difficulties. Lori Anderson's main legacy is that she has broken down barriers between the performance art experimental theater world and the pop, rock, recording, and touring world. She has also explored various gender and feminist issues, and, related to both of those things, experimented with and invented music technology. <laughs> 